All right, so now that you've seen some of the interior features of the STI, let me show you some of the exterior ones. This particular gun has ambidextrous safeties. As you can see, there's a safety on one side and also on the other. They're, they're both connected. They both work in unison. This is so that you may shoot right-handed and activate the safety, or you can shoot left-handed and activate the safety. This is, ambidextrous safety is uh, very helpful in competition because sometimes you have to shoot weak-handed, which entails drawing the gun with your strong hand, in my case it's right-handed, doing a transfer to your other hand, and then flipping the safety off. That, that's a little bit more safer. You definitely do not want to draw the gun, flip the safety off, and then try to pass it off it, because there's always a chance of hitting the trigger. This is about a two and a half pound trigger pull, and it's very light. But okay, so anyway, safeties. There's also a grip safety like standard 1911. Without depressing that, the gun will not go off. A lot of competition guns, they will uh, bypass that. And this other gun right here, this other STI, that safety feature has been disabled. And so now, you, this is basically purely for looks. It doesn't, feature, it doesn't work as a safety anymore. As you notice, I'm not depressing that. And I can press the trigger and it will go off. That uh, basically by dis hmm, disengaging that grip safety, it allows you to get a more sloppier grip on your draw and get your first shot off. And shooting the steel challenge, it's all about the draw. A lot of it is anyway. And uh, if you that grip safety is not engaged properly, your first shot could take you considerably longer than it should, and by therefore adding more time. When I shot the steel challenge the first time, that happened to me. So I took some electrical tape and taped that down just for the match. But uh, essentially I wouldn't mess with it unless you run into that problem and need it. But it's still a nice safety feature. I'm going to talk a little bit about grip and the grip that I was taught to use. <clears throat> Let me go to the cock um, When you shoot a 1911, you want to take your thumb and put it on top of the safety. Um, before I learned that, and I had my thumb below the safety, the recoil of the gun would actually flip my thumb up and put it back on safety. So then when I tried to shoot again, the gun wouldn't go off. So what you definitely want to do is put your thumb on top of the safety. That keeps it down that it will not get engaged accidentally. The next, for my case, I'm right-handed, so if you're left, you just want to reverse this, is you take your other hand and you put your thumb as far forward on the frame as you can on that dust cover and you want to make sure there's no gap right here between your thumbs. This gets your your left hand almost straight. It'll first time you do this it's going to hurt your forearms pretty good, but you you want to try to stick with it. It's a little painful at first, but it will help you with the recoil. And what that does is for some reason it, t it tends to get your arms and your hands in line with the muzzle a little bit more and helps reduce that muzzle flip, which allows you to get a quicker second shot. If you watch a lot of videos on YouTube and you see some people shooting the TJ Hooker style, the gun just kind of flips in their hand. If you get a grip like this, I guarantee it's just going to flip a little bit. And all you want to see is that front sight bouncing up and down in the rear. Let me see if I can line that up right. This is what you should see, that front sight bouncing in between the two rear. If you do the TJ Hooker look, you're going to be all over the place. And you want to grip the gun predominantly with your weak hand, in my case, the left hand. And all this one's going to do is pull the trigger. For competitively shooting, I make my own ammo. I, you know, I buy all the components. I don't make bullets, but I uh, put them all together and I tweak it for my particular gun that I'm using. And for the competition, you have to have a, a minimum power factor. Your bullets, you can't be loading a bunch of wussy bullets. They have to be at least a certain power. And uh, once I found a nice powder and primer and bullet that I liked and the gun seemed to like, or actually made my minimum power factor that I was looking for, and uh, then I tweaked the gun to run at that point. Uh, for example, the, the recoil spring in there, the, the, slide, the spring that works the slide, Mostly when you buy a brand new gun off the shelf from a manufacturer like uh, Para Ordnance or Springfield or Colt, they have this huge 18-pound spring and it's almost in impossible to rack the slide. 
you will run into a problem with that. You'll get jamming um, smokestacks with certain ammo. And so what I've done is I essentially got a, a, an array of recoil springs and started with a light one somewhere in the middle and I worked I kept changing those springs out until I liked the the muzzle flip if I've noticed with if your spring is too heavy and your gun does work when after you take the shot the muzzle rises and the gun nose dives because that spring is so heavy it slams the the slide forward and it nose dives so if your gun is doing that then you definitely want a lighter recoil spring and there's a video I posted out there of a uh, of me shooting a 45 pair of ordnance. I'm using a 7 pound recoil spring and a 155 grain bullet. That was the lightest spring I could find without cutting any coils off, which I don't recommend doing that. But if you notice, the gun shoots pretty much flat. The, the, it cycles and it goes right back. If I'd have had a spring that was too heavy, for one, the gun might not cycle properly, but the gun will nosedive. A, another rule of thumb for setting, for putting your recoil spring in there is I like to have my brass drop about five feet away from me. And uh, any further than that means your spring is too light and you could do a little damage to your gun. If it's just dribbling over your fingers, then your spring is probably too heavy. A recoil spring, this, the properly sprung gun will help a lot. The next thing you can do is in the main spring housing, I'm not going to take it apart, that's this portion right back here has a the mainspring in it and that has a lot to do with the weight of your trigger pull so if you were to get a light mainspring and replace that it will reduce your trigger pull up to a little bit anyway but you don't want to go too light because that's also what what makes the puts a little pressure on the hammer when the hammer go when it hits the primer so if your mainspring is too light you might get light strikes on your primer and not get an actual gun to go off So my advice, once you get your gun sprung the way you like it, and you get your loads the way you like it, I wouldn't change anything unless you just like experimenting with different loads and going to the range. I personally don't have that much time, so I once I've got something that works and it feels right for me, I kind of just stick with it. The uh, dry firing, you can dry fire the hell out of these guns. A most modern firearm you can, as long as it's not rim fire, because I think it will damage some of the barrel, or some of the whatever where the I guess it's the breach but essentially don't dry fire 22 a rim fire of any kind but these single these center fire guns you can dry fire them all the time and if you can't make it to the range that's a good way to train is to just dry fire and what I like to do is get the grip you you use and I put my front sight on a light switch in the house of course make sure it's unloaded and focus on that front sight getting everything lined up squeeze the trigger count to three and don't blink and watch that front sight and then do it again rack the slide put it on your target squeeze and count to three theoretically what that's supposed to do is to get you trained to watch for that front sight by not blinking you're hopefully training yourself not to blink when the gun goes off and by staring at the front sight and not really your target you're, that'll train you to look for the front sight as the gun rises and when the gun settles you'll be looking for that front sight and therefore get your second shot off even faster. Just a few chips. I guess that's about it. So you guys enjoy.